Hello, hello, beloved. I, I know that you are not just enjoying what the Word of God does inside you, but some of you are getting excited because there is a fire inside of you. And this question, yeah, maybe that's why I am alive today. That's why I can hear these words. That's why I'm in this place where I can actually hear these words about victory, overcoming that. And yes, it's uh, for a time such as this. I'm um, <clears throat> continuing and I will speak more about what happens with the death and I want to bring something from the Old Covenant and Old Testament where I understand that these people actually they defeated death they overcame it I think they did it first in their own lives there was no fear of death and we'll, we'll, we'll go with that um, um, in um, Exodus 32. You know this. It's one of my all-time favorites. When um, <clears throat> God comes to Moses and uh, he says in uh, Exodus uh, 32.10, Now, therefore, let me alone that I am that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and I will make you I will make of you a great nation you know yes uh, understanding that God is testing Moses maybe that idea has some merit and you can think that way but at the same time, I know the Word of God is yes and amen. And it's not really playing with words. We might be doing that. We might be trying people and trying, testing. Let's see what God is going to do if I do. But that's not how God is. I think He was ready to start. And maybe if that would not be there, um, now we would have learn about Moses instead of Abraham <clears throat> it's so clear that this is um, um, life and death very clear so Moses he says pleaded to the Lord his God and said Lord why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and mighty and with a mighty hand. And um, so the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. And Moses basically pleads there and he says, Hey, um, if you destroy them, just wipe my name from the book of life. I, I, I don't want to be there without them. And this is something so powerful that um, I, know, I know it's the Lord. This is defeating death and personally Moses had no fear of death in him if he could say that think about um, compromising losing all the position and the salvation wipe my name out I, I, I don't want to be there without them no save them too I told you this story before in one of the uh, older recordings where I was in uh, um, 
with with a with a, a person and he didn't know the Lord and he was suffering and he was um, um, almost dying and then I saw the demon that was taking his soul I heard and I saw the chains as it was dragging his soul uh, towards hell and um, anything I tried to do the way I learned how to pray it didn't work and then I was looking at the Lord. You know how you are waiting on Him and you know He's there, but He said nothing. He said nothing. So that thing was, you know, I, I could see that demon. Oh man, I hate those eyes looking at me and says, You see, you have no power. You cannot, this guy is too bad. He, he is destined for hell, as nothing can do. And he continued after he looked at me with those ugly eyes. And uh, then um, that cry came out of my soul. And I know that is defeating death, overcoming. Because that kind of a, a trying to save yourself, you think, hey, that's, uh, at least I am safe. At least I know the Lord. At least I make it to heaven. You now that person that's his choice but I felt like I jump in and I said if you take him take me with him <laughs> it still breaks me when I think about that moment because from heaven it was like a lightning coming right in there breaking the chains destroying the devil and hell and all the darkness and my um, delivering that soul and looking and listening to the Lord it's like I'm so proud of you son <laughs> like he was waiting for me to say that <laughs> oh man that, that was but thinking about retrospectively uh, only if, if if you are still holding on to your life you, you cannot jump in and do that and I think Moses uh, did that in Numbers uh, 16 45 um, same God comes to Moses and Aaron and says get away from among the congregation that I may consume them in a moment he was not joking and they fell on their faces I mean this this shows me it was serious absolutely serious and Moses said to Aaron take a censer and put fire in it from the altar put incense on it and take it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them for wrath has gone out from the Lord the plague has begun this is serious stuff that is rampant it's not gonna spare anyone unless there is an intercessor unless there is an intercessor first chronicle 21 16 again that's this time david David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, having his hand, a drawn sword, stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. He ends up to go in a place um, and bring a sacrifice. Remember? that place of sacrifice on that mountain became the place where the temple was going to be um, like built <laughs> interesting the temple was built in a place of intercession between life and death that's the temple and of course we have our Lord Jesus that through death he defeated Defeated, he defeated death. Romans 6 8. If we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. 
death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives for God. <clears throat> and um, uh, Hebrews 2.14 Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, through death to destroy it. See, that's the sacrifice, that where he said, I, I give my life and then I take it back. But he didn't spare his only begotten son. He did not spare. So powerful. Exactly that intercession that saved, that destroyed that and saved those souls and bring them into life and release those through those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. See, fear of death, it's kind of a, um, the last fortress to fall. It's so important. It's, it's, it's not just the one thing to fight. Sometimes it's, it has these tentacles in lots of places. Fear of that. But when that is destroyed and you see that, then um, the enemy has nothing. No power. Death has no power power over you and this is what I'm I'm speaking I'm preaching I'm believing that he raises this generation that they are just smiling when death is threatening them just smiling knowing they have overcome it <laughs> because they don't love their own lives unto death they don't love <laughs> their own lives O oh, death, where is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15, 55. O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. Verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. <laughs> so, um couple of things about this victory over death. In uh, Matt, Matthew 8, 22, Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. The word necros, that's used to describe, uh, to, to be used for the word dead or translate the dead in English, means the lack of life. So, it's not in existence, it's just you are not in the life. Like a lack of necros of biological, that means lack of biological life. But in our case, we're talking about people or situations, the dead, bearing the dead, that have no eternal life. They have no God's type of life. And they're, they're necros, they are dead. Ephesians 2 1 and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. See the people out there they are dead, not that they don't have a soul life, they have a soul life. They are alive in the soul, they are alive in the biological, they have a body, they go and work and think and do things. But if they don't have the eternal, the Zoe, the God type of life, they are dead. They are separated from the Lord. And that's how we were before we got born again. And we got resurrected with Christ. And the Spirit of God is one with our spirit. 
in uh, in John 5:21 it says as the father raises the dead the necros and gives life to them even so the son gives life to whom he will giving life destroys that destroys the death right because it's resurrected sons there are people there they don't know the lord but speaking the gospel and believing and bringing the life to them they come to life that's defeating death okay um first corinthians 15 45 and so it is written the first man adam became a living being the last adam became a life giving spirit this is the main weapon the main way that we defeat that by giving life life giving spirit and i love this uh place in uh, second timothy 1 10 where he says, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, that life, eternal life has been revealed now. Who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel? you know the gospel the good news of who god is who christ is what he did and who you are in him because what happened to jesus happened to you that's why his power becomes your power hallelujah immortality abolish that First Corinthians fifteen fifty three, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up and victory and yes there is a moment that's coming that's gonna happen this exactly word this exact word but remember how we describe the word of god it was it is and it is to come because living in time and space it's hard to describe the now of god it was it is and it is to come and yes it comes it will come that moment of the rapture moment where all the bodies will be changed in glorious glorified bodies but this word that is swallowed up in it was when jesus destroyed that through resurrection and guess what? It is happening. It is happening with you and I. It is happening. It was, but it is. And it is coming. It's not just, well, let's wait here and let's uh, struggle here and one day Jesus is going to come. No, he did it. He finished it. And now he is doing it. That's the gospel and it's happening it's swallowing it's swallowing that today I'm uh, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing and where where is he taking us and it's not just words it's not just desires it's not just well maybe one day I know this is happening now and some of you will see it and are seeing it right now amen